account in your area i want to hear from you send us a whatsapp zero two four four three four zero four three seven. share your own blackout situation with me tonight and let's interrogate the issues together as you heard at this press conference that we just finished exploring more ahead on that also tonight whether you meet or not law on vigilantism will come president akufado tells political parties as national peace council needs to work out modalities for the meeting between the ndc and mpp and i'm determined that we should rid our country of it. Yes, whether they like it or not. At long last, they have now agreed to sit down. Whatever happens in that, those discussions, if they're positive, good. If they're negative, we're still going ahead to deal with the phenomenon. We're going to pass the vigilante law. Meanwhile, former NDC Deputy General Secretary Kokoaido, who warns the two main parties risk losing relevance in political space if they fail to end political violence caused by party militias. If we are not careful as politicians, we face extinction. We are becoming an endangered species. When you hear the talk on the ground and people are getting sick and tired of MPP, NDC, MPP, NDC, MPP, NDC, we are facing extinction. And today we tell you why the Ghana Water Company is warning of a major water crisis hitting the western region. The dam also feeds VRA, which is of very critical nature. So. Basically, the energy enclave around Abuadzi are all going to suffer if we don't get enough water. And in business, Bank of Ghana Governor Dr. Ernest Addison assures the recent sustained depreciation of the city would be over soon. On later in sports, we'll update you on what's been happening on day one of the International Tennis Federation World Junior Circuit and the Table Tennis World Junior and Cadet Championship. And also tonight, Amnesty International set to petition Shraj after medical report revealed driver and mate charged with the assault of policeman were tortured in custody. And then later, Shatawali goes biblical as he wins eight honors at the three music awards. So God said in Philippians 4 verse 19 that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I dedicate this award to Willie Roy. We'll have more on this and more. Uh, don't forget to share your uh, your past challenge situation with us tonight. And all the stories we hear tonight, Water Company is warning of a major water crisis in the coming weeks. If steps are not taken to halt the activities of a quarrying company near the uh, uh, Ankore River in the western region. The river is the only source of water supply for the second D Takradi metropolis. But the flow of the river has been blocked already, uh, allegedly, uh, by the Asamandu uh, Quarry Company, preventing the Ghana Water Company from supplying water in the metropolis for the past one month. We'll hear from the residents shortly. But first, a regional director of the company, engineer Mark uh, Teiko Kujo, has been explaining the situation further and warns that the, the treatment plant may have to be shut down if action is not taken. I realized that there was a quarry which was close to the Anankwari River. And they have dug deep trenches. This matter was reported to the appropriate agencies, EPA, the Regional Coordinating Council. They were all informed about this situation. And the quarry was asked to stop work and do some remedial works on the activities that they have created at uh, close to the Anon Quarry River. Just about a week ago, Ghana Water realized that the water level in our dam was going down at a pace where we felt that it was not normal. So we decided to go and do 
some recce along the tributary, along the course of the river. What we realized was that this same contractor who was asked to stop working around where the river courses has come back to even now block the river and place dynamite in the course of the river to blast stones and win these stones for his personal activities. Uh, this is a very disturbing situation for us as a company because for now there is no inflow at all into the Nankaru River. The communities that are affected seriously if there is no water coming out of Javan treatment plant are basically Shama. Of course, Sekindita Krade, if this situation goes on without redress, it is very likely that the dam level would go down and the obvious is that we may have to suspend operations. And, and that is not the only consequence of this particular problem. He also noted this problem may also have consequences for energy production and industries as well. Uh, I think for the past uh, two months now, I think the water supply has become a challenge to us here in Sankandita, uh, most especially uh, Fikuma. Uh, when We'll go live now to my colleague uh, in Italia Quanza, who has been on this beat for us uh, today. And since we've already been talking about a lot of the past situation, I want to bring you uh, that full interview um, about the, how this problem in the uh, Sekendi Takrade area may also affect uh, power, power supply there as well. This river, of the dam also feeds, uh, we send water to VRA which is of very critical nature. So basically the energy enclave around the Boadzi uh, VRA area, they are all going to suffer if we don't get enough quantity of water to treat. So it is a big issue, not only for residential consumption, but equally for industrial use as well. What are the matter to the authorities that this situation to be taken on seriously? We think that it's a national security issue which should be tackled with all the seriousness that it deserves. The contractor should be brought to book to come and do the necessary remedial works to allow water to flow in the course of the river. Uh, let's go live now to my colleague Natalia Kwanza. Uh, Ina, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, tell me, you live within the affected area, uh, uh, Takrade and Sekendi, where this is a major problem. Uh, you've been interacting with some of the affected residents. What have you been telling you? Yes, so Evans, for some residents, they have not had water the past one month. Some of them tell me that they have to wake up as early as 2 a.m. to watch for these water to come let's take a listen to some of them i've been interacting with uh, i think for the past uh two months now i think the water supply has been become a challenge to us here in second uh, meter most especially uh, Fikuma. uh when you have it in the weekend that is where uh, saturday or sunday it will take you like two weeks or three weeks before you get another water supply so it is not easy for us at all. All we have been getting is the Ebola and you know the dry season has also come. So it's very hard for us to get water. So sometimes you wait the dawn tea. When you hear the people has opened the Ebola, the well, then you rush and go and get maybe one gallon, then you buff it. The tap doesn't flow. It doesn't flow at all. Normally it comes late in the night around 1 a.m., 2 a.m. and it can come as very tiny. It doesn't come, it doesn't flow very well. And normally, sometimes it's come and it's very dirty. You have to put it there to settle before you use it. I stay at New Thakradi and then the water problem there is very serious. Sometimes it goes for like three weeks, one month, no water. And then we have to trek to far places to fetch the water. If you don't have money to take a car, even if with a car, how, how many gallons are you supposed to take or can you take along with you? It's very appalling. Sometimes you have to wake up at dawn, as early up and wait for the water to come before you can fetch some. Even yesterday we had the water around 12, they took it back. So for now I don't even know when the water is coming back again. 
and we've been managing the well water around the neighborhood. So apart from the well that we are all using, if you need pipe water, we have to take a gallon and go and fetch it from somewhere and bring it to your own house. Uh, Ina, have we heard from the quarry company that is blocking the, the waterway? No, Evans, I've been trying to pick them, but um, when we were outside, I tried to speak, to speak to some of them, but they declined, saying that they I should speak to the contractor. But as it stands, the information I had that the contractor was arrested yesterday by the police. So he has been arrested by the police? Yes. Because I, I know that this had been reported uh, to the to the police already. Now tell me, uh, so but from what you say, this has been going on for uh, a whole month, correct? Yes, Evans. And it, 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 uh, it, any explanation why action was not taken before today, before now? So for engineer Mark Tekokujo said, and um, when they realized this, um, went there and then told them to stop. But they still realized that the water that they were getting at their treatment plant was very low. So they had to go back to the site and then see what really the problem was. That was when they realized that the um, company in question had not stopped and was still working. Uh, Ina, thank you very much for, for that. And we're trying to, to get some clarity uh, on, on this very situation, why it had to take this long uh, for action to be taken on such a, a critical matter. Uh, we'll return to uh, additional uh, issues relating to the supply of uh, of water shortly uh, because of the of concerns already raised uh, about the potential for uh, additional challenge in the in the system uh, not only in the that particular part of the region but across but across uh, the country as well we'll get into that shortly but i want to quickly return to the power situation that we've been dealing with already and uh, tonight we have uh, today we've had a press conference by the energy minister by the energy minister addressed by a host of uh, individuals including great co uh, but also the ghana gas company the deputy uh, power minister amongst others uh, on, on on the power situation that i'm sure you're witnessing and already have tons of your messages through that i'll share with you now uh the the national democratic congress has a statement out tonight and they are demanding the publication of of a of a timetable uh, in the wake of the power challenges that uh, many of you may be experiencing right now. My colleague, um, Elton Broby, has a copy of that. What does the NDC say? So, I was already saying that they've taken notice of the undesirable return of rampant and consistent power uh, outages, uh, also known as doom so. And the parties that they wish to register their dismay and discomfort are the fact that the entire country has been experiencing power outages for months now. Yet the Akufo, the government, has refused to come clean on the true state of affairs as far as the worrying situation is concerned. Now, the parties as well as government spokesperson, including the Energy Ministry, have over the period resorted to stonewalling excuses and sometimes crafty subterfuge in an annoying attempt to explain our genuine concerns of Ghanaians. It has now become as clear as daylight that uh, we are indeed in abnormal times. The fact of the matter, according to the NDC, is that Dumso is back and this has been collaborated by the Africa Centre for Energy Policy, ASEP. And they, 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 they have been talking about what they describe as disturbing happenings in the energy sector. And for them, uh, they are aware that the various utility companies have accumulated debt post the legacy debt to the tune of almost two billion dollars in just two years under the Akufuado administration. And the parties that it must be noted that the legacy debt was not occasioned by the elsewhere John Mahama NDC government, and this was debt accumulated from the days of President Rawlings to John Kofo uh, to the last NDC government, hence the Christian legacy debt. This debt has been estimated to be around 10 billion Ghana cities, mm. according to the Kufaru mm. government. I see, and and the the NDC the NDC observes uh, in their statement they acknowledge that under their time we know they had the longest period of uh, of, of a power crisis. Right. They acknowledge that yes, the challenges were there, but they say that the challenges were quote efficiently dealt with mm. uh, by December 5th, uh, by December 2015 by the Mahama administration, such that generation capacity was was increased uh, from a part three 1,810 megawatts to 4,000 uh, plus megawatts. It says the, the Mahama administration secured our uh, 
uh, our fuel sources through the uh, 1 billion in USD investment in a turbo gas processing plant, which supplies about 100 million standard cubic feet of gas daily to generation plants, which we know has been shut down now because of the uh, of the connection to WAPCO, which right. uh, officials today at a press conference at the ministry said it was a reason why we're having the current challenges. Mm. Uh, the NDC going to say that, as we mentioned before, the NDC government also introduced ESLA to deal with the uh, indebtedness of the utilities. It therefore begs the question as to why we are back, they say, to do so. He says the answer is simple. We are back in doom so because of the Akufado government's ineptitude and its mismanagement of the oh. sector. But they have a conclusion. Right. And and and, and be, Evans, be, be, before I get to that, mm. they've been giving us a breakdown as to how much state enterprises own each other. That has brought about this whole issue about uh, the, the issue about debts. And he said currently almost all state owned enterprises in the energy sector are in a serious financial situation. PDS, formerly ECG, owes independent power. Uh, uh, productions or producers a colossal amount of about one billion dollars whilst vr owes ghana gas company an amount of 735 million dollars vr also is indebted to gni gas to the tune of 160 million us dollars and government of ghana owes great co to ecg an amount of 171 million dollars now this grim situation according to the party is having a uh, a serious effect on the power sector and adversely affecting uh, the people of this country. Now, their conclusion is that, if, according to the facts available to the NDC, on the happenings in the power sector points to a far uh, scarier picture that the coup for the government is vainly seeking to portray. They are therefore demanding that government uh, elevated beyond mere resorting of excuses and trying to uh, play play down the issues. They are calling on the president and his appointees to confront this issue head on by admitting that we are back in doom so and take urgent steps to resolve the situation. Whilst at it, government must immediately publish load shedding timetable to allow Ghanaians to plan their lives uh, to you know to, mm. to, to, to deal with this particular matter. Well, this is signed by Sami HMV. There was a press conference today and government categorically denies the claim that the challenges that the power sector is experiencing, for which reason many of you are sharing with us tonight that you are in darkness, is because government lacks the cash, the money, to buy enough fuel to power the plants. Listen to uh, Deputy uh, Energy Minister responsible for power, uh, Ure Kwedu. We wanted, or our hope as a ministry was to reduce to the barest minimum the disruption of um, uh, supply of energy to the good people of this country. And we were hoping that you wouldn't even know that this work was going on. Unfortunately, unfortunately, um, we've gotten to where we are. Somebody may ask, did you make any provision for alternative fuel? And the answer is yes, and it's a big yes. As you are aware, Takrade, most of the generators in Takrade use gas. And that gas, which hitherto would have gone to Tema, were all redirected to Takrade. But we are not getting nearly enough gas to power the Tapco and uh, Ameri um, plant there. So that is really where the huge challenge is. As far as um, Asogli, is concerned, they have their full complement of gas, which is the maximum 150 megawatts, which they are giving us. AXA 2 uses HFO, that one is not gas. We have procured enough um, fuel for them, and after this um, meeting, we would like you to, we'd like to invite you to join us to go to Tor facility and also access facility, and in, indeed, they are struggling for you to ascertain for yourself that indeed we have enough fuel, contrary to what um, is being um, banded, like I said earlier, about that government doesn't have money, we are mismanaging the um, energy sector and all that. It's absolute boulder dash. So that is the Deputy Minister responsible for power. The Deputy Minister responsible for petroleum, um, Dr. Amin Adam, uh, said the shutdown of the, uh, uh, the, the, the gas plant in, uh, in a trouble which for the connection into WAPCO, which has led to the, to the, to the problem currently, which you're experiencing in your homes, which they, they said today will last uh, uh, for 12 days, was really inevitable because if government did not shut it down to do the connection, we're going to be losing significant amounts of money. We have had to finally take a decision to do the shutdown because for every one day 
that you delay in the shutdown, the government of Ghana is to pay 400,000 US dollars. That is how much the people of Ghana will have to pay if we further delay the shutdown. Because the contractors have been brought to site for some time now. And so if you have to pay for 10 days, that's about 4 million United States dollars. And you all know the difficulties we have. We need that money to develop our country, to build more schools and more hospitals. We cannot be using it just for postponing something which is an obligation, something we have to do to get better. And so it's inevitable. And that's uh, Dr. Min Adam there speaking to speaking at the press conference today. Well, the minority side in parliament have been addressing this as well. The former power minister, who also subsequently became the former petroleum minister, Amako Fibwa, uh, in an interview with my colleague, um, uh, Joseph Pukugaku, parliamentary correspondent, makes the point about the, the real heart of the problem currently is simply lack of planning because the shutdown uh, is, is a planned uh, uh, thing. And government should have known way ahead and planned for alternatives. Listen. The reasons that have been assigned, I, I just learned of a, a press conference that's, and the reason is because of the gas. Yeah. It's true. We have Ghana gas not supplying gas because of uh, the interconnection work. But this is the issue. Almost 80% of the thermal plants we have in Ghana today, they use gas and they use crude oil. Okay? And this government has known for almost more than six months that there will be this interruption for connect interconnection. I caution in this house when I knew almost five months ago that there has to be proper planning ahead, making sure that thermal plants that we need crude oil, that there is enough crude oil. So if today we are being told that we are in the dark because of the interconnection. The logical question to us is that what amount of planning has gone into this? So, so for you, that justification is, is, is out of place. I am, think the explanation is not My job is to tell you the points so that you can basically ask those who are in charge. What amount of planning has gone into this? Were we able to plan enough to ensure that those thermal plants that will really suffer when it comes to the attainment of gas? Do we make sure they have enough crude oil? You're also interested in your thoughts. You think there wasn't adequate planning which has resulted it in is, no issue? It looks like there was a lot of planning that was not in place. It's clear to me. And so that question should be probed. See, the people of Ghana, I have learned, are very understanding and will be very clear in their mind when the government levels with them. Okay? But I think that if the government do not level with the people of Ghana and comprehensively Tell the people of Ghana what is going on, the challenges they are facing. But try to basically do an ad hoc announcement and think that when it comes to the energy sector, you can simply buy your way on a daily basis. It won't work. Because in the final analysis, the people of Ghana do not want to hear anything else. I've learned that. Just turn the light on. And that's my advice. Mm. So that is uh, Amako Fibwa, he's a former uh, power minister, but also former petroleum minister as well under the uh, John Mahama administration. And I asked you to share your uh, your blackout experiences with us tonight. And many of you have done so on our WhatsApp comments. I want to share a few with you. Good evening, Evans. Uh, when will politicians stop the li uh, lies and be truthful for once? My lights go off at exactly 6 p.m. and comes back at 12 a.m. and can't count the number of times it goes off during the day for the past month as i text to you it has gone off again and what are they saying hmm, in in darkness and that is a tonsu uh probably the dakus in a tonsu centers that one kofi Sidi says why can't this government be sincere enough with Ghanaians and admit that there is doom so in the country and publish the load shedding timetable i don't need government to tell me there is doom so when i consistently sleep in darkness uh, uh another one from adam says uh he's, he's in tamale it says so like joke like joke doom so is back in the country god save us um this one from uh Orin, uh, ahmed from Orin in kumasa says no light since yesterday uh another one here says the light has been all going off every now and then without any plan in place for us to prepare for it um, another one says, it is obvious that a, a humongous industry like the energy sector would experience few glitches with this major takeover by the PDS. However, their communications outfit must be blunt and let Ghanaians know 
the true state of our electricity supply in order to refute any propaganda. I still believe that Ghana is no, not near doom. So he says, uh, Kwesi Raymond from Agona says, good evening, Newsnight. Our lights went off since 8 a.m. this morning here at Achimota. Power has just been restored. Just Kelly uh, sent us that one. Uh, Hassan says, thank you for the discussion on the energy crisis. I'm sending documents for the questions to the energy ministry. A lot of you are sending in your own documents and questions already. Of course, if we get the energy ministry, we'll put these questions to them as well. I remember uh, that there's also the, the water situation that we've been talking about. Uh, some of you have already been sharing that, your experience with us as well already. Uh, Marjo says, I have, I have not had water in my area for two weeks. I am in Dansoman. I could go for to the situation is worrying. Uh, we'll get to that shortly for you. So listen to news here on Joy 99.7 FM. When we return, uh, we'll tell you why there are concerns uh, that the water situation, uh, particularly in areas such as uh, uh, because of the damage water filters at Wager Treatment Plant, may affect more homes in Accra and some areas. Details of that when we return from this break. Hello? I say, how would it now? Vodafone normal 10 megabyte free data. I will call Smart Ruby Adwin. Share. Hello? Have you heard that Vodafone is giving 10 megabyte free data for every minute you talk? You just dial 50 50. Yeah, hello? Aha! Right now, we the Vodafone people just they call, call plenty. Sick of us, you talk one minute, you go get 10 megabytes. You talk two minutes, you go get 20 megabytes. Three minutes. Call Vodafone or any network and get 10 megabytes of free data every minute you talk. It's simple. Talk to browse. The more you talk, the more data you get. Dial 50 50 to subscribe talk more browse more terms and conditions apply the future is exciting ready thank you folks on my air list today show some love for contractor eb <laughs> so contractor okay. yeah. what do you think about the country's changing skyline oh send them down there show you my across skyline they change you pa, 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 pa. wow contractor don't you get worried when you hear of buildings collapsing i'm not from a nice one on tassam mm-hmm. Nara, it is the lackability of using low quality product too. please explain why yeah cement is a no quality on your gasm village of fefe yosi way it was built with gasm yeah. says the gasm is your question Gasem, three cement grades, greater value. Gasem, the nation builder. It's time to experience something different, unexpected, and definitely beyond banking. It's a new era at GCB Bank, Ghana's most welcoming bank, where we offer you a world of financial security, flexibility, and convenience. We swiftly serve you with over 180 branches and 300 ATMs, and provide e-banking solutions that make it possible for you to bank anywhere, anytime. When you need a personal loan, sooner is better than later, so we give it to you in 24 hours to make sure the experience is always memorable. At GCB, your opportunities are limitless and we keep you smiling at all times. We're bigger and better, ready to take you beyond banking. GCB Bank, your bank for life. You're live, still here on News Night on Joy 99.7 FM. And most parts of Accra could face acute water shortage soon if damaged water filters at the Wager treatment plant are not fixed immediately. According to the Municipal Chief Executive of the Wager Bowie Municipal Assembly, uh, Patrick Kumar, the damage is putting pressure on the remaining eight filters, which, when not addressed immediately, could result in a permanent shutdown of the plant. We can speak to him now. Thank you, sir, for your time here on News Night. Yeah, good evening, my brother. But what, so what exactly is the problem? Uh, first of all, uh, good evening to your cherished listeners. Uh, after I've zoomed in office, you know, I've taken upon myself to uh, visit the uh, key installations in my municipality. And uh, today I visited the wager treatment plant. And the information and what we saw is really uh, not good or something to write home about. And I believe urgent steps need to be taken immediately to avert, avert any uh, future uh, water shortages in Greater Accra. 
so the the challenge is with the filters yeah basically you know they have 12 filters and four are down currently and the ace that are in place now i'm told are very weak and then also because of the pressure on it now some of them could give in and then it would affect the production in greater Accra. so why are they not replacing the filters uh, with that i believe uh with my visit a comprehensive report is being put in place uh, which the appropriate ministries will be copied and then the presidency will be copied as well i believe when such it, uh, when that is done attention can easily be given so that uh, we can get this issue resolved once and for all because we wouldn't want to have a situation where we will sit aloof for this kanka to you know come in to bite us we need to take the bull by the horn and look at the situation and make sure that we address it once and for all. Uh, yeah. As we spiked with the uh, SDGs, this goal number six, ensuring uh, water supply mm. or ensuring water, we need to make sure our people get the right services mm. from the Ghana Water. Uh, yeah, Mr. MC, it's a good initiative, but I'm curious, why must you take the MCE uh, for Wajak Bawe? to detect this and escalate it to the president. We have a sector ministry. We have the Ghana Water Company, um, all these agencies that are directly responsible for this, and they all have not done anything about it till you went there? I'm also a representative of the government here, and it's my responsibility to also pick such information and relay it to the appropriate quarters for redress. And basically, that is what we did this morning. And I believe, just as I just made mention, a report is being put in in place, and then it will be copied to the media sector ministry, and then also the presidency for uh, immediate action to be taken on it. And what they, they, the managers of the facility tell you that if this is not done immediately, um, major parts of a crowd will, will have a, a water crisis problem. Oh my, oh my brother, if a dam has the capacity to use nine filters to work, and currently eight, uh, four is down, that should tell you that the situation is, is serious. And the ones that we have in place now are old filters, and they can give in at any time. And we don't want to sit for that to happen. All right? I'm grateful that you joined us. That is the MCE for the Wager uh, Bowie Municipal Assembly there. Um, what about the water situation? Do I have heard, I've seen some of you already sharing your, your experiences with us as well, particularly those who live in the Sekendi Takrade uh, area where we, that's our first story uh, with the situation with the uh, company that had blocked the waterway uh, leading to the shortage of water uh, for the last one month, which is turning into a, a major crisis and maybe an effect uh, power supply there. And those who may be affected by this wager problem as well, share with us as well here on News night still still ahead whether you meet or not law on vigilantism will come president akufado tells political parties as national peace council meets to work out modalities for the meeting between the ndc and the mpp and i'm determined that we should rid our country of it yes whether they like it or not at long last they have now agreed to sit down whatever happens in that those discussions if they're positive good if they're negative we're still going ahead to deal with the phenomenon we're going to pass the vigilante law uh, george Jaffe is here with the very latest from the world of business hello george what do you have in the headlines well hi events and uh, coming up in business the governor of the bank of ghana dr ernest, ernest addison assures the recent sustained depreciation of the ghana city will soon be over and we'll be getting you some uh, report and update on the current power situation to expect the supply of fuel for the Volta river authority the business news on news night is brought to you by mtn business welcome to the new world of business kingdom books and stationery you know one-stop show for all your office essentials and first national bank how can we Serve you better. It's your day off and you end up looking after the baby while your wife goes off to work. You realize you have no idea how to change a diaper. So you when you call your wife. Hello, darling. Yeah, hello. Hello. Kujo, is everything all right? Everything is not all right. I'm not seeing Toku. How do I change a baby who's diaper, please? Kujo. Kujo. Okay, first, put the diaper. The video call freezes. <laughs> While you wait for the internet to catch up, the baby sprouts a fountain and wets the diaper. As you are getting a new one, your wife comes back online. Kojo, no! Why did you leave a beku alone on the bed? But I had to go and get a new diaper. What must I do next? I beg, quick, 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 quick. Open quick. the front of the diaper. It's the side that has. Wow, look, eh? the video freezes again. Abba. By now, you know where the conversation is going. There's no buffering in real life. So why accept it from your internet connection? Get connected and experience ultra-fast internet to your home, powered by MTN Fiber Broadband. We're day for you, everywhere you go. 
Let us help you bank with the right bank. At First National Bank, we're more than just a bank. We're a digital partner that actually understands your business. Enjoy massive value with our various banking solutions. Get a business check account, a day-to-day -day transactional account for all businesses from all sectors of the economy. Access our online banking enterprise and bank your way 24-7. Invest with our short or long-term options that enable immediate access to funds. Optimize your cash flow, raise capital, and acquire assets with ease with our lending solutions. Trade with speed, consistency, and innovation with our global payments and forex solutions. With so much value up for grabs, there is no reason not to bank with First National Bank. First National Bank, how can we help you? We give you nothing but the best, we stay above the rest. More quality, more affordability. Kingdom Boost and Stationery. Everybody's going to the one and only shop. Where customer satisfaction is a guarantee. Kingdom Boost and Stationery. Oh, yes. With our 30 days credit facility with no interest charge, free delivery services, and our free consultation on setting up your office, Kingdom Books and Stationery is unmatched in our delivery of quality and affordable office essentials, equipment, and furniture. Experience world-class customer service in all our branches in Accra, Tema, Kumasi, Cape Coast, and Takwadi. Call us on 0302-764-101 or visit our website at www kingdomgh.com Kingdom Books and Stationery your number one stop shop for all of its essentials Kingdom and stationery terms and conditions apply um honey I need to get some but I don't have cash on you <laughs> Let me get some fuel quickly and, and let's go. And how are you going to get the fuel? I thought you said you didn't have cash on you. <laughs> what is this one? My Puma card. <laughs> all it takes is a card. The Puma card allows you to buy fuel cash-free from all Puma energy filling stations. You can use your Puma card with any visa points of sale and ATM across the country. The Puma card also works on mobile money. You get amazing discounts when you fill up with your Puma card. So register for free and get your Puma card instantly at any Puma filling station. And you only got one for yourself, eh? Yeah, would I have had that piece of my... Oh, <laughs> thank you, honey. And where are you going? I'm getting something from the shop real quick. I need to test the card. <laughs> Puma card. Cash-free convenience. This here is for the creative ones. The cool cats. The mavericks. The ones whose parents still don't know what they do. The ones who rock large, froze, and vintage clothes. Those who describe everything they like as deep and create the beauty that takes our breath away. You should never stop creating to do your banking. That's why Standard Chartered brings you SC Mobile, a digital banking app that allows you to pay for that camera, get a statement for your visa, set up your debit card, and so much more whilst in the studio. Simply download the SC Mobile app from the Apple Play Store. Load money into your account and you're good to go. Just dial 3311 across all networks for free and be unstoppable. Standard Charted. Here for good. Terms and conditions apply. Joy 99.7 FM Welcome back to Business on News Night. And let's first uh, start with a story where Ghana has been challenged to take a full advantage of the Africa Risk Capacity Insurance to build its capacity in climate disaster management for financing as well. Speaking to Joy Business in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, the Africa Risk Country Director, the Africa Risk Capacity Director was actually talking about the fact that this might be good to help Ghana in addressing its risk issues when it comes to natural disasters. So our priority is to build capacity as national level. That's what we do. What we want is the Ghanaians to be able to do it for them. And government looks at his own budget and says, if the risk is at the magnitude or one to two, I can copy with my budget. I can still do that and still do education, health, etc. But if it goes to three, I am in trouble. I'll have to cut to health or education. So therefore, I want to make sure that that risk, I transfer it outside of Ghana through a solution of innovative financing, such as insurance or bonds. And that's the Africa Risk Capacity Director General, you know, that is Mohamed Bivugu, uh, speaking to my colleague, uh, Novo Nakwa in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia.
Now, the bank, banking consultant, Anotwe Champon, said the rate to hold uh, by the Bank of Ghana was in the right direction. The Bank of Ghana today actually held its key lending rate to commercial banks at 16%. Now, Anotwe Champon believes that this move is actually in the right direction. Though we manage our own economy, but still, you have to have regard to others. So, well, less than a month ago, the U.S. indicated that they don't foresee you know, moving their rates up or down. Uh, it's not surprising. But in the case of Ghana, the governor did indicate that they've had regard to the fundamentals that dictate whether rates should go up or down. Inflation in particular, there are no threats at the moment. So, maintaining the rates... But, but some will say that, that we should be watching the offshore investors. They reacted negatively to the large decision. But then uh, the governor um, re responded to that, that they, they are investors. But at the end of the day we are managing our so they should not detect the rates that we should have. Rather, what our fundamentals show, what our figures show is what is going to determine that. Nanotwe Champon is a banking consultant. Now, Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, has given the firm assurance that the recent challenges facing the Ghana city would soon be over. The governor sent this when he engaged the media following decision to actually hold the policy rate at 16%. There is more in the following business desk report. The governor of the Bank of Ghana maintained that his projection is based on some pressures on the city slowing down. He had some advice for those who speculated to cash in on the city's depreciation. Yes, you see a growth in foreign currency deposits when everybody betting on the CD going in a particular direction. And I'm sure those who speculated in building up those deposits have earned, earned from that process. I think if I were them, I would quickly go and translate those foreign currency deposits back into to CD deposit. The governor also announced plans to restrict the amount of local bonds that offshore investors can hold. Reduce that vulnerability to portfolio investors by reducing the, you know, the portion of domestic debt that we sell to non-resident portfolio investors. On five local banks that are supposed to be restructured by the Ghana Amalgamated Bank, the governor maintained that they have the required guarantee which shows that the banks have met the capital. I said the government has guaranteed that arrangement. That's what I said. You should interpret it the way you want, but we have a guarantee that those banks have made the 400. Dr. Addison also disclosed that he hopes to start the cleanup of microfinance institutions from the second quarter of this year. I can assure you that we are in the second quarter. Hopefully during this quarter we will be able to bring uh, that issue to fruition because we are close to obtaining the resources that we need to deal with the microfinance institution and the estimate, the preliminary estimate that we have for microfinance institutions is just under 700 million. Dr. Addison says they are also working with some banks in China on some international payment arranged with some banks in the country. This is to avoid the situation where some trade demand dollars for purchases. And that was a business deck report. Now, the Temayo refinery has begun offloading diesel through its pipes to the Volta River Authority. The diesel is expected to be used in powering the standby power plants of the authority, which will be used in generating power to some parts of the country as a result of the total shutdown of the Ghana gas processing facility in the western region. Ibn Sabote joined the Deputy Minister of Energy to tour the Temayo refinery and came through with this report. The planned shutdown of the gas processing facility is make way for Ghana Gas Pipeline to be tied into the main West African gas pipeline. This has resulted in shortage of gas supply to power some of the country's thermal plants for power generation. Meanwhile, government says it has made provision for enough fuel to avoid plunging the country into total darkness on a tour of the Tema Oil Refinery. Managing Director of Tor, Isaac Ose, said the company has started processing fuel for VRA. Ore Kwedu is Deputy Minister in charge of power. The process is expected to be completed in about 12 days. Eben Sabote's report for Joy Business. And before we go, let's turn our attention to the stock market. And Gold actually lost two pesos to trade at two Ghana cities, 49 pesos. And that's all for business on Newsnight. Uh, thank you very much, George.
I want to share a few of your messages with you uh, coming in on our WhatsApp console. And this one, uh, Eben says, what a country are we living in? We have a problem with our power, but our leaders are there telling us some quick one answer stories. The president is saying something different and the minister is also saying something else. Um, uh, Kenneth from Cape Coast says, light went off at 3 a.m. in UCC Cape Coast. Came just before news night. Thank you very much, Kenneth. Um, Ibrahim uh, in Legon says, my prayer was they should w- put the light on so I can listen to news night. We, s- we, we sell light to other countries and they enjoy it. We Ghanaians sleep in darkness. This is, well... He has some strong words on the matter. Uh, good evening, Evans. It's obvious that the issue of power crisis is gradually getting out of hand. In fact, it is interesting to note that uh, an area like UG campus is one of the isolated zones that hardly experiences Doomsaw, no matter how the situation is. And for Doomsaw to suddenly extend to University of Ghana campus is a clear signal that, the thing, uh, that, that things are falling apart. Uh, share your thoughts as well uh, with us. We'll share it with the rest of the world. Now, President Kufadu says nothing will stop drafting and enforcement of the law to ban activities of political party militias in the country. Now, the National Peace Council is leading the process together, two leading political parties, the MPP and the NDC, to commit to disbanding the militias uh, aligned to them. Now, John is learning the Peace Council met today ahead of the formal meeting with the parties this week. But President Akufado is not waiting for the outcome of the meeting and insists a law will soon be in place to outlaw activities of party militias. He was addressing the Ghanaian community uh, in the U.S. One of the issues that you've heard about that is worrying to all of us is the rise of this phenomenon known as vigilantism in our country. It's a worrying phenomenon And I'm determined that we should rid our country of it. Yes, whether they like it or not. Whether they like it or not. Legislation is on its way to ban it. And the suggestion that I made that the parties, the two main parties, should sit down and work out how they can also contribute to it. I gather that after a lot of going and forward and all kinds of statements by the opposition party, at long last they have now agreed to sit down with the MPP to talk about it. Well, whatever happens in that, those discussions, if they're positive, good. If they're negative, we're still going ahead to deal with the phenomenon. We're going to pass the vigilante law. Well, from the ranks of the NDC, a former Deputy General Secretary Kokoendo who is warning the two main political parties risk losing relevance in the political space if they fail to disband their militias. I think there must be a commitment from all of us that uh, we will not just pay lip service to the fight against vigilantism. And then once we agree, and there's a communique, because I believe at the end of it all, there will be some firm communique. And you have the peace council sign and the political parties will sign to it that becomes the document that you people the media can continue to flag in our faces and remind us that this is what you appended your signature your signatures to we are all committed to that process and we need to save this country like i said earlier on if we are not careful as politicians we face extinction we are becoming an endangered species when you hear the talk on the ground and people are getting sick and tired of mpp ndc mpp ndc mpp ndc we are facing extinction and for me, I don't want the NDC to atrophy. Neither do I want our political space to atrophy because we've all committed ourselves to democracy. Let us build a democracy properly and be proud of what we have. Well, my colleague Parker uh, Wilson has been following up on the Peace Council's meeting and attempt to get the two parties to uh, sit at, a, at an appointed date and venue. What do we know, Parker? Right, so Evans, we know that the National Peace Council today held an emergency meeting over uh, the disbandment of party militia. Now, they had to decide on some terms of engagement as far as the political parties are concerned. So they came to a conclusion, and our source tells us that by tomorrow or Wednesday, they are officially going to communicate the terms of engagement to the various political parties, and I mean the MPP and the NDC, before uh, they, they meet them subsequently somewhere next year. So they want them to understand and agree on the terms of engagement before they set a venue and a date for the conversation. Uh, Paga, thank you very much. And this is part of our campaign, remember, to uh, get the political parties through uh, popular citizen pressure 
to sit at the table and disband these party militias. Don't forget to join that campaign. It's still up and running on the many social media platforms. Whatever you post, remember to add hashtag disband party militias now. We want you to know that if you don't disband private criminal militia groups, we will not vote for you because we are scared. The time has come for us as a political class to say that this development is no good for the future of this country. The NPP has been guilty, the NDC has been guilty in terms of these groups. And so both the NDC and the NPP will have to find a way of engaging the base of our parties. The NCC will continue to condemn, name and shame all political parties who endorse, support and or identify themselves with any of these groups until these groups are disbanded word and in deed. If voluntary disbandment by the parties is not feasible, then I will initiate legislation in the matter. Joy News. God bless you. If you were not there, Nana Kufado today will not be making noise about how to disband vigilante groups. We salute you, Joy. We know them, the individuals in party militias. We know those who fund them. Let's use this to put pressure on the politicians to disband party militias now. They remain a major threat to our democracy as a nation. Hashtag disband party militias now. You don't need macho men to be able to help you win elections. Hashtag disband party militias now. Disband party militias now. Join the campaign. Hashtag disband party militias now. Hashtag disband party militias now. Disband party militias now. Well, no matter how long it takes, we're here, Joy FM and Multimedia, commit to this campaign until we see the disbandment of these militia groups. It's now time for sports. Hello, Hans. Hi, Evans. And uh, two big events uh, kick-started here in Ghana today. The International Tennis Federation World Junior Circuit and the Table Tennis World Junior and Cadet Championship. For the Table Tennis event, Team Ghana lost their first game to Saudi Arabia 1-3. Despond Osai giving Ghana its first victory after beating Sanchez Alfredo of Costa Rica. Nathaniel Kwesi Somoa, an official of the Ghana Table Tennis Federation, is hopeful of Ghana's chances in the championship. Expect we are expecting the boys to do better because we've got very good players, and as time goes on, they would perform better. Mm. And you so you're sure of the Ghana team in this year's champion? Sure, sure, sure. The Ghana team is a very, very good team. Some of them have played in West African tournaments before, but on the international level, this is their first time. But I mean, from what they've displayed this morning, it's very good for Ghana. And you know, we are building for the next we are building the next generation ghana is hosting the all african games in 2023 mm. so we are building more players to join the likes of Derek abrifa so this is the right platform to unearth more talent for team ghana mm. away from the table tennis it wasn't a good start for ghana in the international tennis federation world junior circuit as number one ranked benjamin palm lost to belgian thorben sanen Na Anyema Makoli also lost to Charlotte Mosbayek in the women's division. Swiss player Leah Mosiman, who won her match in Grand Star, hopes to build on the win going into the subsequent matches. It was a tough match. First set was very close, 7-6, um, 7-5 seven, seven, in the tiebreak. And um, it was quite nerve-wracking, but I managed to stay calm and control. And of course, winning means a lot to you. Yes, it's part of the game. And it's, yeah, it's my goal, always. All right, so one down, what do you hope to do in the next game? S same thing, like just stay calm, concentrated, and just push through. And after watching the other players here, you, you think you have what it takes to win this championship? I don't know when that's the goal, but just um, I'm happy with what I have already, so just to play well and that's all. And that's it for sports here on Newsnight. Hans, thank you very much. Now, Amnesty International uh, are petitioning the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice after a medical report revealed the driver and maid charged with uh, assault of a policeman uh, were tortured in custody. Now, this comes on the heel of reports that the police have presented a, a wager circuit court evidence to be used against the suspects. A team of nine legal practitioners on Friday secured bail for the two who were captured in a viral video fighting 
a policeman. They have since accused the police of brutalizing them while they were in their custody. Medical examination conducted shows evidence of torture. Now, John is Henry Kwisibedu. Follow them to the hospital. Here's his report. The cry of a scared driver and his mate remanded in police custody after they were charged with various counts of assault on a police officer. According to them, past experiences meant they would not be spared as they were to spend about two weeks in police custody. Days after they were granted bail, driver Francis Boabing and his mate Albert Tansa narrate how they were subjected to inhumane treatment while in police custody. When I took my medical report to the Odoko police station, the officers didn't even look at it. They started beating me from the time I was arrested until I was taken to court. The investigator said we should plead guilty and our sentence may be reduced. But we did otherwise because we were innocent. After the court hearing, they beat us some more. The situation got worse when we were taken to the CID headquarters. They made me sleep in the bathroom when I was arrested. And before we were taken to court, any police officers who had seen the viral video and felt like beating us did. Medical officer at the Opokuwari Hospital, Dr. Alfred Opoku, tells Joy News his evaluation on Francis and Albert shows evidence of assault. The driver presented with painful right eye, left ear pain, a severe backache. When I examined him, the right eye looked a bit reddish and then the left ear also looked reddish. The other man, he also complained of severe, severe headaches. He also had general body pains and then he also complained of a very severe lower abdominal Pain. Director General of Public Affairs at the Ghana Police Service, ACP David Clue, would not speak on record but says that the two should take up the alleged assault issue in court if they felt they were maltreated while in police custody. Francis and Albert are to reappear at the Wager Circuit Court today, April 1, 2019. Henry Kwesi Bedu's report for Joy News. Well, the Wager Circuit Court today uh, set April 15 as date to commence trial after police prosecutors submitted documents uh, to the court. And the country director of Amnesty International, Robert uh, Amafo, is already indicating that uh, they, they will be petitioning the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice on the matter uh, relating to the alleged uh, assault of the driver and his mate while they were in police custody. So, listening to News Tonight here on Joy 99.7 FM, did you ever imagine that? Uh, uh, Charles Ni Amamensa Jr. I'm sure you're wondering who that is. He's uh, popularly known as Shatawale. Do you ever imagine that he had it in him to quote scripture as eloquently as the as the as a as a bishop himself? Well, that's exactly what he did uh, when he went biblical when he picked his eight awards at the three music awards on Friday. Uh, after picking the Viral Song of the Year, Digital Act of the Year, Fan Army of the Year, uh, for SM for Life, and then Reggae Dancehall Act of the Year, Shata could not control his tears as he dedicated his award to his father. But but listen to this. The, the awards uh, continued. Uh, Shatter again picked the song of the year and the biggest art music man of the year. This time, Shatter had to quote a scripture to express his appreciation. It wasn't like he was reading from a Bible. He was, it was just committed to some memory. And the winner for reggae dancehall artist of the year goes to so God said in Philippians 4 verse 19 that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I dedicate this award to Willie Roy. May he so rest in perfect peace. He said so many times on radio that Shatawale is one of the finest national artists and nobody believes. But God, I hope you are watching this. I dedicate this award to God, nobody. Every girl and the baby doll, no boyfriend when daddy call. And that's all for news tonight. Tonight, my name is Evans Mensa. Enjoy the rest of your evening.